after international parties called for humanitarian ceasefire and a return to dialogue but with few signs of compromise from the crisis despite a lull in fighting which allowed foreign nations to extract diplomats and citizens sudanese citizens and nigerians meanwhile have flooded out of the capital area in fulfillment of the directives of the president of Nigeria, Mohamed Buhari GCFR, that no Nigerian fleeing the crisis in Sudan should be left behind, the federal government has brought back home the last batch of stranded Nigerians from Port Sudan. This latest batch of returnees marks the end of the emergency evacuation exercise put in place for stranded Nigerians in Sudan, the statement read in part. Over 2,518 of the 5,000 Nigerians, mostly students, have been evacuated. But on Monday, the federal government gave conditions for evacuations for those still stranded in Sudan, according to a fresh update by the Nigerians in Diaspora Commission, NEEDCOM. The government said a mop-up exercise will be organized for other Nigerians who may want to return home hereafter. Now, a recap on Sudan and the players involved in the recent crisis. Sudan is a country in Northeast Africa. It borders the Central African Republic to the Southwest, Chad to the West, Egypt to the north, Eritrea to the northeast, Ethiopia to the southeast, Libya to the northwest, South Sudan to the south, and the Red Sea. Sudan has a population of over 45.7 million people as of 2022. Tension had been building for months between Sudan's army and the paramilitary rapid support forces RSF, which together toppled a civilian government in the October 2021 coup. As the plan for a new transition developed, RSF leader General Mohamed Hamdan Dagalo, who is the deputy of Sudan's ruling council, aligned himself more closely with civilian parties from a coalition, the Forces of Freedom and Change (FFC) that shared power with the military between Bashir's overthrow and. The 2021 coup. Bashir, full name Omar Hassan Ahmad Al Bashir, is a Sudanese former military officer and politician who served as the seventh head of state of Sudan under various titles from 1989 until 2019 when he was deposed in a coup d'etat. Both the army and the RSF were required to seek power under the plan and the two issues proved especially contagious. One was the timetable for the RSF to be integrated into the regular armed forces. A second was a chain of command between the army and the RSF leaders and the question of civilian oversight. The conflict in Sudan that erupted on April 15th is in the fifth week with no end in sight. The power struggle between two ones ally, General Abdel Fattah al bohan head of the army and leader of Sudan's ruling council since 2019, and his deputy on the council, RSF leader, General Mohamed Hamdan Dagalo, commonly known as Hemeti, has killed hundreds of people, driven more than 259,000 to flee across the borders and displaced hundreds of thousands inside the country where many already relied on international aid before fighting began. The death toll between Sudanese army and the rapid support forces RSF has climbed to 822 with over 4,000 injuries, the Sudanese Doctors' Union said Tuesday. May 16, 2023. The current fighting, which is centered on one of Africa's largest urban areas, could destabilize a volatile region bordering the Sahel, the Red Sea, and the Horn of Africa. Though the Sudan's army has superior resources, including air power and an estimated 200,000 active soldiers, the RSF had grown in recent years into a well equipped force of some 70 to 150,000 troops deployed around the country and since the fighting began embedded in the neighborhoods across the capital the rsf can draw support with tribal ties in the western region of darfur where it emerged from militias that fought alongside government forces to crush rebels in the brutal war that escalated after 2003. both the capital khartoum and other cities across sudan have experienced great violence with deafening explosions airstrikes artillery fire and intense gunfire especially in densely packed neighborhoods. Their jostle for power seems to know no holds barred. Each general has accused the other of starting the fight and both have made claims they control key sites which could not be independently verified. In recent updates, General Bohan issued a decision to remove Himeti from his role as Vice President of the Sovereign Council. Malik Aga has been appointed as the new Vice President. He was previously a member of the Sovereign Council since February 2021. Malik's military involvement includes being the commander of the Sudan's People's Liberation Movement SPLM, along the Sudan borders with Ethiopia. 
Malik was very close to John Garag and shared his goal of overthrowing the Bashir government. More people that have been appointed by General Bohan are Shams al-Din Kabashi as Deputy Commander-in-Chief of the Sudanese Army, Yasser al-Attar as Assistant to Commander-in-Chief of the Sudanese Army, and Ibrahim Jabir as Assistant to the Commander-in-Chief of the Sudanese Army. Following the appointments and in response to this development, Yosef Izzat, advisor to Hemeti, the commander of the Rapid Support Forces, made an important statement. Ezat conveyed Hemedi's readiness to engage in a meeting with Army Commander Abdel Fattah al bohan provided that a ceasefire is put into effect. This proposition opens the door for dialogue and negotiation between key stakeholders, presenting a potential opportunity for progress in resolving the ongoing conflict. And that's all for now. Kindly subscribe.